uh, for those who don't know me, my name is uh, Fauzi Barut. I'm from Beirut, uh, Lebanon. Uh, I, I am the assistant vice president for uh, information technology at a private university in Beirut, Lebanon. It's a, uh, it's a small university. We have around 5,000 students uh, adopting the American system of study. And uh, also, I am the UNESCO OER chair for access and success. You know, I've been appointed as a UNESCO chair. And I've been doing a lot of work in the area in Lebanon and in the MENA region about open education, uh, creative common licenses and stuff like that. Beside all the things, you know, uh, you know I do at uh, my regular uh, daily university work. Uh, um, uh, actually, we had the, the uh, two sessions already, and this is uh, the third one. In the first session, uh, we were talking about, you know, uh, uh, creative common license, open licenses. And uh, we spent uh, approximately two hours, you know, uh, talking about uh, open licenses. And this is something very important, you know, because it's a big movement nowadays when we talk about open, uh, you know, um, open education, OER, open educational resources, you know. But the thing is that people don't know about uh, this, you know. They think, you know, like that if it's on the internet, it means it's free. And we discussed the copyright laws and stuff like that. And you know how you as a researcher or people working in this field can access millions and billions of uh, information uh, uh, using uh, creative common licenses. So this is, was our first uh, uh, workshop. And then we moved the uh, uh, second workshop. We were talking, we, we discussed uh, uh, often education uh, resources. And we, we discussed, you know, like, uh, 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 the five R's of openness. Uh, uh, we, we, we differentiated between what's OER, what's open textbook, what's open access, open pedagogy, and the MOOC thing, you know. And then, of course, you know, I, we gave some example of important websites uh, and platform that you can access and uh, find information depending if you're looking for a uh, open textbook, you're looking for uh, uh, content, stuff like that. Okay, so this is mainly what we have done in the first two sessions. And since, you know, Nadia and uh, Dennis are in the media and journalism, also, uh, I'm going to admit uh, Arwa here because, yeah. Uh, uh, also, we, uh, I introduced a very important uh, a website, which is called the Internet Archive. Internet Archive, I advise you, I don't know if you know about it, but this is something good for you. Uh, for uh, you can find a lot of uh, stuff there, media, journalism, anything you know related to your uh, topics. Anyway, today's session we're going to be talking about you know, and this is what we have agreed on. Uh, we're going to be we're going to be talking about uh, uh, practical uh, uh, practical online teaching with uh, technology. All right, and uh, let me just uh, start by sharing the. Uh, my screen, this one, all right. So now you can hear, you can see my presentation, right? Yes. Great. So uh, uh, today uh, workshop, we're gonna talk about uh, uh, some of the uh, fundamental and uh, method to implement technology in the teaching learning process. We're gonna uh, look at some tools uh, uh, that can be used to support your uh, online uh, teaching. Uh, talk about different uh, strategies and uh, find different applications uh, that uh, deal with engagement and interaction. Okay, so this is mainly, I'm gonna just here, let me just one second. Just, okay, so there we go. Let me start, uh, uh, actually, you know, like, uh, when we talk about online teaching and learning uh, and designing uh, an online environment, let me briefly uh, tell you one thing, you know, like, uh, I was in charge at my university, since I am the assistant vice president for information technology, I was in charge of moving the whole university to uh, what they call online, what what I call it, you know, this move from face-to-face, uh, -face from the university, from brick and mortar to online. I didn't call it online. I did call it a, a, a remote 
or emergency remote teaching. And uh, for one single reason, because you know uh, it was an emergency and uh, uh, nobody expected that you know universities and school worldwide uh, gonna be closed. So what happened and uh, most of the universities and schools that they, they don't have uh, uh, what we really call online uh, uh, courses and online uh, teaching. Most of the schools and universities are traditional face-to-face -face, and this is our system for maybe the past 100 years. So that's why, you know, I call it emergency remote teaching because designing an online course, if you want to design an online course, really online course, with all the tools, with all the, you know, activities, with, with the assessment, learning objectives, stuff like that. It needs time. If, if, we, if, we, if we wanna talk about quality online course, maybe uh, universities who are, uh, who have online courses or they are mainly 100% online, they spend maybe between three and six months to design just one single course to be of a, a quality online course. But anyway, and I would say that what happened with COVID-19, you know, it forced, you know, something that we have been talking about for years now, it happens in months. Yeah, and people, everybody is talking about online and switching to online teaching and learning. Uh, before we, you know, uh, go deeper, I just put this uh, 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 graphical uh, course map, you know, if we take just one course and to see what are the elements, uh, you know, whenever we say we have, uh, you know, like we want to design an online course. You know, for, you know, uh, at the top of the screen, you see uh, uh, development of an online course. The second stage is, you know, like building an online course. And the third stage is once, you know, you develop your course, you know, teaching your online course. So we have three stages in uh, what we call uh, 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 an online course. And if you look at uh, uh, vertically at each one of those levels, developing an online course, there are so many uh, items that we need to talk about. And every single part of this or box in this uh, chart, there is uh, a lot of work behind it, a lot of uh, frameworks, a lot of models, a lot of learning theories behind it. So we're, this not in this workshop, we're not gonna uh, uh, deal with it because it's not of the objective of this workshop. But I thought, you know, that uh, uh, it will be nice to just make a, a, a quick review before we go into our uh, practical uh, 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 educational tools and what you can do, what type of tools you can use, stuff like that, whether for teaching and learning or whether for your research project that you are now a part of uh, uh, in the RACE uh, project. So if we look at the first part of uh, uh, developing an online course, we're talking here about uh, let's say uh, uh, you start as a faculty member, you know, you have to define your learning outcomes, you know, and usually when we talk about learning outcomes, we talk about learning objectives, and those are a uh, 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 lot of people talk about, you know, like how to write a learning outcome, and this is something because usually a course or a, uh, you are teaching, you know, it, uh, usually it has between four or five or six maximum learning outcomes that should be crafted uh, well, it should be designed well, according, you know, most of the people talk about uh, Bloom's taxonomy and, you know, uh, 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 writing a learning objective that are uh, 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 measurable. And you cannot just say, well, I'm going to, this is by the end of this course, I will do this and this, this, the student will learn blah, blah. Uh, those uh, learning outcomes or learning objectives should be measurable. You, you, you cannot put stuff in the learning objective if you cannot measure them. Then second, you know, uh, well, actually here the framework I'm talking about uh, in designing, you know, an online course is what's known as the backward design. I'm not gonna go into details, but this is one model. Uh, there are so many models that you can use to develop your online course. There is the TPAC model. There are so many models, but you know, I'm using the backward design here. So after the learning outcomes, once you know, you define your learning outcomes, then you move to uh, uh, the assessment uh, part, and this is the second stage, okay? And when we talk about assessment, is you have to ask, you know, how I'm gonna, okay, how I'm gonna uh, uh, know, or how I'm gonna assess, how do I know that my student uh, uh, learn what they're supposed to learn? Here we're talking about the assessment. Third stage, we talk about learning activities, designing learning activities, and the last part is content curation, 
material textbook, uh, you know, all those uh, things that, you know, and we, we talk about content uh, curation last time when we talk about open education resources, OER. And by the way, uh, 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 because everybody went online, a lot of interest by faculty member, at least from my experience, they were looking, please help us to find open uh, uh, resources, uh, open educational resources, okay, which are free and open, which we can use without any problem with uh, copyright and plagiarism and stuff like that. So uh, anyway, those are the uh, four steps in the uh, uh, design, what we call, you know, designing your online course. And unfortunately, what happens uh, usually when you hear a professor saying, well, uh, I want to use this technology, I'm using this technology, I'm using, you know, you cannot, uh, you cannot, whenever you write your learning outcome, the assessment and the learning, uh, the third stage is the learning activity, then you decide, you know, based on uh, uh, your learning outcomes, based on the assessment, based on the activities, you decide which tool or which technology tool you're going to use, okay? Uh, uh, and this is what we call, you know, uh, uh, alignment. Alignment in, in designing your course, you know, it means what? It means, you know, your learning outcome and your assessment and your learning activity should be aligned together. And you cannot just say, well, you know, and this is what, you know, a lot of problem happens, you know, when there is no alignment. Uh, for example, whenever we give an exam to our student, uh, either they will say it's too easy uh, the student or some students say, well, it was too difficult. The professor didn't explain this material and we got, you know, this exam. Why? Because the assessment were not aligned with your learning of objective or learning outcome. Then you find, you know, people using technology all over the places, you know, and, you know, say, well, this activity or this, this technology or this tool that, you know, um, you know, the, our professor used is not is not the right tool. That's why today in our today's session, basically I will focus on uh, 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 technology, uh, what technology to use. Uh, I picked a couple of uh, uh, tools that you know I will demonstrate for you and I hope that they are uh, useful. And then second stage in the designing, you know, whenever you de you're developing an online course, once you finish the design phase, you move to to build your course. And whenever you will talk about building the course here, we're talking about the structure of your course, uh, 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 what multimedia you're going to be using, what videos, audio, presentation. Uh, if you're going to use an LMS, you know, you're going to put your material, how you're going to structure it on uh, Moodle or Blackboard, depending on the learning management system. Once you know you have your course, well, uh, 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 build and it's on the learning management system, let's say, or whatever, and you have well-written syllabus, then you move to the third stage, you know, in uh, uh, what we call teaching your online course. And when we start teaching the online course, and this is where the most, you know, uh, people uh, have problems, you know, because, you know, how I'm going to teach online? You know, how would I teach this course? How do I engage my student? Uh, my my students are getting bored, you know. I'm, I'm especially now in COVID. You know, your uh, people use Zoom or use uh, Microsoft Team in what we call synchronous teaching, and then they will say, you know, my students are bored. I don't know what they're doing. You know, I, I'm talking, you know, for two hours, stuff like. Anyway, so behind, you know, teaching your code, there are also a lot of framework, a lot of theory. For example, we have the. Uh, 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 so many theories behind, you know, uh, teaching and your online presence as a professor, how to be present online, uh, so on and so forth. And of course, you know, at the bottom here, the, the red the two is, you know, like here, if you want to make your course excellent, you know, well designed and everything, then you start talking about is, is your course accessible? Everybody uh, 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 was it designed and developed in a way that anybody, people with uh, uh, disabilities, people, disadvantaged people can, can, can uh, 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 look at my content, can follow up my course. And here we talk about, for example, Nathan, whenever you do this, you have to make sure that your course follows a, what we call the UDL, Universal Design uh, for Learning uh, uh, Standards. There are standards international that it means from the beginning, 
when you design your course, your content, your PowerPoint presentation, everything, you followed a standard which we call the universal design uh, UDL. Again, also, uh, you talk about, we talk about accessibility in a course, you know, is it accessible? Uh, the colors, you know, everybody can, the caption, do I have a video with caption? Uh, or we, we don't have caption, all those things, and it is a complicated process. What I'm trying to say from this uh, uh, graphical presentation that you see in front of you, that designing an online course, believe me, it's not an easy task. But once you know, so you start, uh, you do it the right way, and you start in a simple way, then you start building and uh, improving your course as you know, uh, slowly and slowly, but uh, uh, you cannot do it on your own. Uh, you have, that's why, you know, you find in universities or uh, uh, what we call the teaching learning center, where you see uh, people with technology background, you see people who are instructional designer. Okay, of course, let's say now we have uh, Dennis, we have Nadir, that they are uh, expert in a subject area. You are the subject expert, but you know, uh, uh, you're not expert in everything. You're not expert in, you know, the tools. You're not expert in the, how to design your course and stuff like that. And this is also uh, uh, one of the problems that we, we are seeing in uh, a lot of uh, setups and universities that not all universities have what we call the teaching learning center, which uh, was uh, uh, appropriate stuff. So this is a, a brief uh, uh, introduction before we uh, 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 deep, uh, uh, go deeper into our presentation today. Today, uh, what I will talk about, I will talk about, uh, you know, uh, active learning, how, uh, uh, you know, what's interaction, how do I engage my student, how we can, you know, all the, all the things. When we talk about active learning and the concept of uh, uh, active learning, we're talking about uh, uh, a, a wide uh, variety of learning activities. When we say active learning, in which student, our student engage with the course content. How, you know, this is what we say when we see people, you know, uh, uh, we, we, are, we have developed a, a, a course where, you know, we have a lot of engagement. And this is something we refer to as active learning. According to Chikern and Gamson, they say that students must talk about what they are learning. They have to write about it. They have to relate to past experiences and apply it to their daily lives. They, they must make what they learn part of themselves. And this is, you know, something uh, very true. So, uh, you know, structuring hands-on activity and to design activities uh, that are tied to your learning objective or outcomes, it will help, you know, in what we call student engagement and the retention of the material. So it means what? It means if you want to design an activity, it's not just, you know, this is an activity, I want to throw it in my course and that student do it. No, we have to think about how we need to structure those activities, how we, we need to in, in design our activities, what tools we need to use, what technology we need to use so that our, uh, uh, this activity that we design, it, it will be very interesting for our students so then they will be uh, engaged. When we talk about uh, uh, different type of activities which contribute to active learning, we have all kinds of activities. And it depends on the course, for example. Let's take, you know, example now, we have two colleagues uh, uh, attending this webinar. They are in the uh, media and journalism and stuff like that. They can use, you can use, you know, a case study, for example, uh, activity. Okay, some other people, you can use discussion, you can use uh, games, you can use uh, uh, puzzles, uh, you can use uh, uh, different type of uh, activities, depending on uh, what is the topic or what is the subject that you are teaching. For example, this is an example here. Suppose, you know, let's take a simulation. Suppose, you know, like you are teaching uh, uh, a course in uh, 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 journalism and uh, the topic is uh, misinformation, let's say. You, you're teaching your student about misinformation, okay? Then you can, for example, give them a, a case study, okay? Uh, they can, you know, assign it as a group of people, you know, two, three as a group. And then, you know, they have uh, 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 and put in the discussion forum, let's say you are in the Moodle platform, in the discussion forum, you know, giving them uh, an exercise or an activity and, uh, and, uh, and uh, what we call uh, uh, go to the uh, internet, find for, for example, two authoritative websites on censorship and control, 
and then come back, okay, and put your finding in the discussion forum so that all the students in the class will see the output or the result of, uh, uh, of uh, whatever you have found. And here, what you're saying is, and then maybe you ask your, for example, maybe you ask, uh, you know, like uh, uh, group A uh, to answer group B and group B to put uh, uh, their feedback and comments in the discussion forum about the finding of group A and so on and so forth. So here what you've done, you've used the case study, you use the uh, Moodle as a platform, use, you know, the discussion forum within Moodle to uh, engage your student so that they uh, interact with each other and uh, learn from each other, okay? It doesn't have to be the learning coming just from the professor. You know, it can be, as you're going to see later on, it can be between student and student, they can learn from each other. So how can this interaction support active learning? First of all, you know, keeping students actively engaged with you, the content and each other promote student success. Yeah, and this is one thing very important. You know, like you have to keep your student engaged uh, uh, between uh, you and your student, between student, between student and student, and of course there is the content, you know, the content that you put online, you know, students should be able to interact with it. Uh, another uh, point here, when students are observing, doing, communicating and reflecting, they are actively working with concept and people, and of course we describe all these activities as interaction, and interaction is at the center of our teaching uh, and learning. The three main uh, uh, type of interaction that, you know, that we talk about, we have the student, we have student-student interaction, we have student-teacher interaction, we have student-content interaction. Okay, those are the three types of uh, interaction that uh, uh, we uh, uh, need to talk about. When, for example, when we talk about student-teacher interaction, is, you know, it can be formal or uh, uh, informal, okay? Let's take an example of some example about student-teacher uh, uh, interaction. For example, uh, in this slide, what you see here, instructor-initiated inter interaction. For example, you are teaching an online course and you know you design daily or weekly assignment and project that promote collaboration among students. You design an activity, an assignment, you know, uh, uh, you post question in the discussion boards. Uh, for example, if you're using a platform such as Moodle, uh, which encourage various type of interaction and critical thinking skills among all the course participants. And here, uh, uh, if you remember, you know, like you as a teacher, especially in the discussion forum, you know, uh, uh, you just pose a, a question, you, you, you ask a question, and you let students interact between each other. And you, as a professor, you know, you will have to know you know how to 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 uh, to uh, 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 monitor this conversation. When you have to understand and know when to uh, uh, give your feedback. Uh, whenever you have you know uh, you interfere. Whenever you have to uh, uh, say something or correct uh, something in the discussion that's happening. And this is also, as I said before, those are there are a lot of theory behind. Uh, for example, uh, uh, moderating discussion forum, how, you know, uh, uh, you encourage critical thinking uh, for your students, stuff like that. And it's beyond for, uh, this uh, workshop today. But anyway, uh, uh, this is uh, an example of uh, instructor-initiated uh, instruction. Uh, for example, another uh, thing is, you know, like uh, 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 student-professor uh, uh, interaction. Uh, for example, maintain an active daily presence, particularly during the beginning weeks of your course. Whenever you design an online course, it's not enough to just design the course, put the content online, and you disappear. Okay, you have to, student have to feel that you are there, you are you are present. And this is what we call the online present. They have to feel the human presence of the instructor. You know. Uh, 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 you have to, you know, they have to see that their instructor is always there by giving uh, uh, feedback, you know, on, on uh, uh, things they do, okay? And of course, you know, when we talk about online uh, uh, in, uh, interaction uh, from the, between student and instructor, uh, for example, uh, they have to know that if they post a question in the discussion forum, I will show you some example, then they have to know that, you know, 
uh, uh, somebody will answer them. Their uh, professor is there, you know, if they post a question or they send an email, so on and so forth. And this is, you can specify it from the beginning in your syllabus, uh, in the introduction of the course that, you know, saying that I'll be answering questions within 24 hours, you know, I will respond to email within 48 hours, so on and so forth. Your students have to know, especially online students, you cannot just say, you know, student ask question and the instructor is not here or is not uh, asking them. Okay, and of course here, they have to know uh, from the beginning some, uh, 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 some uh, uh, policies regarding your course, the netiquette, you know, where to post questions, how to post assignment, you know, your, your students are online, they are alone. The, the more you are clear in the direction you give to your student, okay, if uh, they need any support, technical support, where do they find it? Uh, for whom they send, should send an email, so on and so forth. Maybe, you know, a lot of professors put uh, what they call office hours, let's say. Office hours, it means, you know, we meet twice per week from this time to this time, and the professor is online at this time, so students can log in and they can ask any question. And here we're talking about virtual uh, uh, office uh, hours. Uh, uh, you should be clear, you know, the clarity is very important about dates, about submission of assignment, all those things, it's, it's very important. Uh, another point is absences from interaction. If you are in the course, you know, and you were very active at the beginning in the first two weeks and then you disappear, maybe you are uh, uh, maybe sick or something happened, you know, if if there is something wrong, your student need to know. You cannot just leave them, you know, like uh, 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 surfing in the course and the instructor, what if the instructor is not here? If you need to be absent, you have to tell them. You have to, you know, say, for example, you know, I'll be absent, uh, my assistant will be taking part. You have to inform your student uh, uh, in case of absences and stuff like that. When it comes to student-to-student -student interaction, the second uh, part, and here, you know, we're talking about uh, uh, formal versus informal uh, interaction in the, you know, you have to encourage, you know, between interaction in uh, as a formal interaction between students uh, in one class and informal interaction, you know, by assigning, for example, a group project, uh, role playing, uh, okay, uh, collaborative brainstorming, for example, collaborative brainstorming. We're going to see some tools later on of the presentation that how, how, how I do this, you know, how do I, you know, uh, you're talking about student-student interaction, fine. What tool I will use? What, what, what is the best tool to use, for example, to uh, do collaborative brainstorming uh, in an online uh, class or online training or whatever? And the last one is the student content interaction. And here we're talking about, you know, student interacting with the content, for example, you know, the uh, tutorials you have, the images, the audio, videos, and we're going to see also examples about uh, just, you know, uh, a static image and, a sta you know, a video, and we're going to see what tools are available to make this video more interactive. Uh, we're going to see tools that you can use, and they are simple tools, uh, how you can make this image, which is a still image, which is static image, how you can make it an interactive. So students will look at the image, but this image, they can interact with this image in your uh, course or whatever assignment or whatever, I don't know. So uh, anyway, so uh, you can use different tools, for example, uh, simulation, you can use uh, uh, different type of games, you know, in your uh, uh, online courses. And this is all falls under what we call the content. So in summary, the keys to developing an effective online learning activities are to make include opportunities for active learning, allow different type of interaction. Uh, sequential is very important. For example, if you design your course, you know, different type of activities, maybe, you know, moving from one week to another week, you know, they build on each other, you know, you know, it's a sequential modules, you know, module one, module two builds on module one, module three builds on module two, and the activities, maybe the activities go from simple to more complicated uh, uh, activities, you know, so that you can bring your uh, uh, student, you know, in the Maslow hierarchy, uh, um, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the hierarchy uh, from uh, normal thinking to what we call the uh, uh, high level critical thinking of your student. Okay, 
uh, you need to include some opportunity for students to think and reflect. And they have to think about something and reflect, let them reflect, let them uh, say, you need to hear their voices, you know, you have to encourage them. So those all are what we call uh, uh, a small summary about uh, uh, developing an uh, effective online learning uh, activity. Allah. Next, what we will talk about, okay, well, since we're talking, since we're talking about integrate, we're gonna be using technology, right? Sorry, and I, uh, what I have done is I quickly, as I said, it's not uh, the objective to to uh, to give a workshop on designing your online course or whatever, but you know, I, I had to make this quick review before I go to our uh, technology part and how to integrate the different tools and technologies within, uh, uh, within our courses or with whatever activity we want to use. There is a very important model, it's called the summer model or the summer technology model. And this is a model which was developed by Dr. Uh, Puente Dura, okay? And this is a, one model that help teacher to evaluate how they are integrating uh, and incorporating technology into their instructional practices. It's called the summer model. How many of you, Dennis, you've heard about the summer model? Uh, Nazir, you've heard about the summer model? You've used it before, Nazir? I didn't use it, but uh, I, I've seen, I've been hearing it. I mean, because of our open education too. Yeah, so now, yeah, uh, okay. So, so, uh, uh, so the, the, the summer model, it's a very important model. It's very simple uh, because it makes you think and you should ask question, you know, uh, I'm using technology. How I'm using technology? I'm using it as a substitution. Am I using it uh, as an augmentation? Am I using this technology uh, uh, modification, redefinition? And the model is simple. If you look at the model here, Let's look at this model because you hear the professor and instructor saying, well, I'm teaching this course and I'm using technology. And, uh, you know, at the end, you know, like um, I use technology heavily and I use this activity, but I had problem, you know, the still same, uh, my student don't understand or I don't know what, or the success rate was not good. You know, whenever it is my advice before you use any technology into your training, into your courses, you know, you have to sit down and ask yourself, you know, I'm using this technology. Let's take an example, for example. Uh, now you're teaching uh, 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 online, uh, now online, and now you say uh, before your student, uh, whenever they want to submit for you a, a, an assignment or a project or a case study, Okay, maybe they write it down with their uh, pen and pencil, or maybe they write it uh, 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 using MS Word. Okay, so here uh, you are using a tool which is MS Word, but this MS Word now it didn't do anything with you know like uh, uh, the teaching and learning thing, except it, it did a sub what we call a, a direct substitute. Okay, no, nothing changed in the teaching and learning process. You cannot say, well, I'm teaching online and I'm using MS Word, for example. I'm teaching online, I'm using MS PowerPoint, for example. It's all what you have done is, you know, like you substituted something you used to write in with uh, a pen and pencil, pen, a pencil and paper, and now you have substituted it with a tool, which is MS Word, for example. This is, we call it substitution. The next level is uh, uh, augmentation. Uh, the higher level is modification and the higher level is redefinition. If you look at this uh, uh, table here, when we talk about substitution, we're talking about uh, the lowest level uh, of using technology, okay? Which simply, as we said, uh, substitute one way of doing the task for another with no change in the outcome. Okay, I gave uh, a small example here. The second one is augmentation, and this is a little bit higher on the technology scale. For example, if a student, for example, uh, 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 write uh, uh, something and he put a hyperlink uh, uh, for a definition or whatever, if you click on the hyperlink, uh, uh, it will take you, uh, for example, to a video or will take you to another website. This is okay, this is something good, you know, which, but this is what we call augmentation. Uh, uh, something a little bit better or higher than substitution. But uh, uh, a third stage here, we're talking about the uh, 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 modification. 
Now, at this stage, you know, here, uh, the task student is doing, you know, uh, 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 he start changing things using the technology, okay? He start, you know, to create something uh, new, uh, you know, at this stage, for example, he using technology to analyze rather just to consume uh, information. That's why the first two parts, you know, when we talk about substitution and documentation, we talk about that the student is consuming information while the second, according to Akid, uh, this model, the summer model, the, the second two stages, modification and the redefinition, here we're talking about student creating the information versus student consuming uh, uh, information, okay? For example, uh, uh, the, the, the number four is the redefinition. Uh, and here we're talking about uh, uh, creating new student-driven tasks from the learning requirements. Engagement is high, for example, uh, 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 let's say an example, the same, uh, 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 the same case or the same thing that the student used to do. Now, uh, 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 he has it on MS Word, you know, and now he shared it with his colleague. And instead of him working on just one uh, file, everybody is sharing and working on the same file. For example, you know, by using, let's say, uh, uh, Google Docs, let's say, and he opened the sharing let's say, to share it with other students in the class to collaboratively work on one project here. You know, each one is contributing from his side to whatever project or whatever. So this is what we call the, the redefinition. And I advise you just to think about the summer model. It's a nice model. It's a simple model. There are so many examples about, you know, the summer model, about how you use technology uh, uh, into your teaching. Another thing I would like to mention is the pedagogy wheel. And the pedagogy wheel, it's a, it's a wheel which was developed by uh, Alan Garrington. And what uh, uh, Alan uh, did, he designed a very nice wheel, really. I don't know if you've heard about the, uh, uh, this wheel before. Uh, Kefaya, have you heard about this uh, pedagogy wheel before? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. This Not, is the first time. Uh, uh, first time. How about you, Arwa? Have you have you have you used the uh, pedagogy wheel before in your uh, teaching training? Remember, uh, you have to unmute yourself, Arwa. Can you unmute? I cannot hear you. Unmute and uh, so we can hear you. The first time. Ah, uh, this is the first time. Ah, uh, this is the yeah, first time. Yeah. Anyway, the the pedag pedagogy Pausing, wheel. Can I, can I interrupt for a second? Actually, it looks it looks very similar to media literacy approaches. Uh, it looks what, uh, Nazi? It looks it looks very similar to media literacy approaches. How oh, you yeah. analyze the medium and the content? How you approach it? How you grasp it? Yes. How you analyze yes. it. How you evaluate and how you remake it? Actually. Yeah. That's true, that's true, the same process. Exactly. Okay, so the, the pedagogy wheel uh, uh, and uh, you know, the pedagogy wheel, the way it was designed, it's, it's a very nice uh, tool which is available, which connect what we call a Bloom's taxonomy with you know, learning outcomes, activities, and the interesting part, what different, you know, we have hundreds and hundreds of application, so he's connecting the theory, the Bloom's taxonomy, with learning objectives, with educational application available uh, uh, in the market. Uh, uh, and he designed the, this wheel, Hello, we will see a, a very nice wheel. But anyway, the, he, he divided the wheel into five segments and he called it the pedagogy wheel. The first one, the first segment, he called it remember and understand. Second one, apply, analyze, evaluate. And the last one is uh, create. So if we look at the pedagogy wheel, and you, you know, it's a, it's a just, a, it looks complicated, but you know, just uh, briefly, I will uh, explain how this wheel works. Uh, first of all, uh, those applications that they have curated under the uh, uh, pedagogy wheel, you can find them on the iOS store if you have an Apple, and you can find them on the uh, Google Play store. And so far, uh, they have around 100 
88 suggested, or maybe now, maybe more, a little bit, 190 applications. Let me just show you how uh, 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 this wheel works. If we look at the uh, if we look at the outside of the wheel, let's let's look at the outside. You see up here the summer model huh? on the top. On the outside here, he just draw the summer model, and you know, as we said just now, the summer model it it starts with the substitution, augmentation, mod. Oops, sorry. Uh, modification and then you move on to uh, redefinition okay so those are the four steps of the summer model if we go inside here you see different application you know if you just look at those application okay you see for example different type of names and application that's fine if we go inside one circle right here can you see my mouse moving? You see it, yes? Okay, yes. If, if we look here, okay, here we're talking about, he, he's showing us type of activities that we can use. And if we go inner into, in the inner circle, here we, he's talking about the Bloom's action verbs. Because, you know, Bloom's, of course, you know, who knows Bloom's taxonomy, we're, we, whenever we design learning objective or learning outcome, we design them by using what we call measurable action verbs. And here, th those are the action verbs. So what this pedagogy will tell us, if you are at the substitution phase, if we look at this slice right here, okay? Now, those are the action verbs, okay? Which is according to a Bloom's pyramid, remember? Those are the action verbs that you will use. Those are the type of activities that you can use. And those are the application available in the market, which you can use at this level. Moving to second level, if you go into augmentation, the same thing, you know, those are the action verb. Okay, this is here. We're moving from remembering in Bloom's taxonomy to understanding, to applying, to analyzing, to evaluating and to creating. This is what we call Bloom's taxonomy, and yani moving from the lowest level skills to the highest critical thinking in our teaching and learning. And this is something uh, very important for us. For example, if you are teaching a course, you start, for example, at the beginning of the semester, you know, slowly and slowly, but at the end of the semester, your turn and your job as a professor is to go up you know with your student to bring them with your hand to the upper level thinking creating or whatever everybody maybe all of you have heard about the plumes taxonomy and how to write learning objective learning outcomes for a workshop for a training for a course whatever so if we if we go down uh, uh, in, uh, uh, on this wheel here here we're talking about here we're talking about uh, uh, augmentation, here we're talking about modification, and here we're talking about redefinition. So this is what the pedagogy wheel, I advise you just to, you can download this wheel as a poster, they have them in, uh, it, uh, it is in maybe, I don't know, 20, 25 languages, you find it in Turkish, you find it in Arabic, you find it in French, you know, this pedagogy wheel is it all in all languages. Uh, and uh, 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 just uh, research it. Anyway, my presentation will be uh, not only the recording, but I will send uh, Raniero all the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So you will have my slides later on also. So in case you want to use my slide for your teaching, for your training as a reference, do whatever you want to do with them. Okay, so this is what we call the pedagogy wheel. Uh, uh, when we talk about the tools and technology, my advice to you and my advice whenever I do training is you can, uh, you can use uh, technology and tools and, you know, keep it simple. You don't have to uh, uh, use uh, a complicated online tools. I will give you an experience, you know, a, an example from my experience. Now, it's well known here in Lebanon and in the area that you know our university moving to online was 
a very successful experience. From the survey we have done to our students, they were very satisfied with for us moving from face to face to online. And I'll tell you the secret. Uh, uh, the accreditation agency, uh, because they we sub, we are accredited by uh, uh, international institution, American institution, we submit to them a report, what we have done, stuff like that. And they uh, really appreciated our approach, how we moved online. And the thing is, I moved online, uh, 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 technical support I have, I have four or five people in my team only. I did the training, I did the support, I did for 5,000 students, for 1,000 professor, I did it, you know, with, with no problem whatsoever. And the secret is, was a very, I use very simple tools. For example, at our university, we have a virtual learning environment, which is Blackboard, it's same as Moodle. We have used this uh, platform for maybe 20 years now, so we have a culture. Our faculty member uh, know how to use Blackboard, how to put things on Blackboard, but they are not well trained how to teach online because our university is a traditional university. It's not a university uh, uh, to teach online because uh, in Lebanon, online is not accredited. Yani we cannot say we're giving a a certificate or we're giving something online and because the Minister of Education will not accept this. Anyway, so we use this platform and I have uh, 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 I have uh, trained our faculty member to use what we call a video conferencing component, which is the Skype for business because we have a license for it. It is part of Microsoft Office uh, 365. Skype for Business, we train them. It's a very simple tool. So they have the Blackboard where they put all their stuff, their courses, discussion, uh, uh, videos, PDF file, whatever. And for synchronous uh, teaching, they use Skype for Business. And in the spring semester now, I'm moving to Microsoft Teams. So that's why, you know, I use two simple tools. Uh, I didn't need much, but the secret is I did offer support for our student full support for our student. I will offer maybe 16, 17 hours of support for our faculty member so that our faculty member don't panic. Any technical problem, any training needed, any question, any email, we did answer all the requests. That's why whenever we send the survey out to see, to hear what their experience, what do they think, it was very positive and it was very successful. So what I'm trying to say is, whenever you know you want to teach online, whenever you want to use technology, you can use very simple tool and very uh, open tool, a uh, free of charge tool. A lot of people, a lot of uh, institution, they say, well, we have the best technology. We have invested so much money, so much euro, so much dollar in our infrastructure. And our experience with online was a failure, you know, even though, and here the leadership, you hear, you know, presidents, uh, deans, you know, talk about this. It's not, it's not big, if, if you, if you buy all those things, that means you're going to be su successful, okay? The secret is keep it simple. Keep things simple. Start small and move on. This is my advice. Anyway, uh, uh, the, the, uh, Another thing, for example, if you, ha if you have a Moodle platform in, and you, everybody know what Moodle is and maybe you've used Moodle before. For example, if you are teaching online, start with Moodle. Just uh, before you jump and, uh, to different technology, different tools, look what's in, inside Moodle, what activities are there, what resources are there. Uh, we're going to see examples now. Okay, about... Uh, and then the last thing is, depending on... Uh, uh, what you are teaching. Uh, suppose, you know, you are designing a, 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 a lesson, for example, and in your lesson, for example, you want to engage your student. You have to think, okay, I want to engage my student, okay, and what type of engagement? Then you will say what type uh, of tool or what tool I will use or how I can uh, 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 use this tool for this type of this uh, 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 activity I want to do in, for example, if I want to engage. If you think about, you know, if you're doing something like exploration in your teaching, you know, you want students to explore. 
you can use you know different tools of, you know like for example uh, google search you can use youtube whatever if you are uh, if you are in a part that you are explaining the lesson like we're doing now i use microsoft teams i use uh, zoom i use uh, webex i use whatever it depends on what i'm trying to say it depends uh, what element of your lesson or teaching you know you can then you decide okay what tools or activity uh, 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 you can use uh, we're gonna see a lot of examples now so i will start now with uh, i will pause for two minutes okay uh, to, to answer some question i i had to give this overview about you know like uh, uh, course design the elements you know couple of uh, 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 models, you know, like the summer model, the pedagogy wheel, because we have now in the second part of our uh, presentation, we need to, uh, uh, because it's called the practical online teaching with technology, I will introduce you to some of the items are very uh, useful tools for you to use. So I will pause and if you have any question, please do. I will take a short one minute break with some water and I will listen to your question while I'm drinking. Any question? That looks lovely. And I, we can even make three minutes so we can visit the bathroom. <laughs> ah, okay. We can, uh, if, uh, we can uh, uh, yeah, if you want to take a three minute break, I'm fine. Raniero, can we take two, three minutes break? If you want to stop recording or so, I don't know. Rani. Okay. okay. All right. Fine. We'll okay. Take, okay. We'll take three, uh, we'll take three minutes break. And then uh, uh, we come back in three minutes to start with the action now. It's going to be very interesting, uh, the second part of this uh, presentation. Fine. I'll see.
All right. Uh, <clears throat> Fauzi, can you hear me? Fauzi, can you hear me? <clears throat> Fauzi, can you hear me? Uh, Raniero, this is the, uh, let me just, uh, oh, so can you... hi again, now I'm back. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, Fauzi, just for, for recording purposes, the uh, gallery that you are showing most of the times is covering the slides. Ah, okay, so I'm, uh, I'm gonna minimize it, yeah. Yeah, please do, yes, yeah, it, it's better. Like this, it's good? Yeah, it's perfect, yeah, thank you. Okay. All right, I'm just checking. Uh, I'll open it just uh, until everybody is back. Uh, yeah, let's wait another couple of minutes, people, so they can. They yeah, can. because I want uh, I want the participants to be ready. We're gonna have some uh, your your laptop on and be ready because we're gonna do some collaborative work in some of those tools, you know, together. Okay. Uh, just another technical point, Fauzi. I made you the host so that you can manage the whole thing, but uh, you will have to stop the recording at the end because you are the host. I cannot do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. At the end of the session, please, please, please uh, remember to to stop to the recording. Stop the recording. I will. Okay. I will. Like, however, I already learned that I learned a lot from your lecture this morning. Uh, well, uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's the theory usually is not very attractive and uh, sexy. Now, in the second part, you know, when we use some tools and, you know, I introduce some tools, I guess, you know, people will like it and they will find it very useful for their training, teaching, uh, research, whatever they're doing, you know, uh, hopefully. But, 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 you know, I've been doing a lot of online training in the last few years, but I realized that I was simply in the substitute phase of, of the sums. <laughs> you know, it's not you, Raniero. It's, uh, that, that's fine, you know, it's... It's everybody's uh, uh, thing, you know, they can, you know, people they're saying you teach online. When I sit with them with professor, uh, you know, to brainstorm and say, well, this is what I'm doing. I'm using this tool. But, you know, I mean, you're using it as a substitute. What is the engagement, uh, you know, uh, 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 what is the transformation phase? You know, what, what's happening? Then they will realize because uh, people don't, uh, don't you know when we talk about models and we talk about frameworks you know it's it's based on research a lot of research you know so when you help a faculty member when you empower them with the frameworks and the models and stuff like that then they will realize that you know what they're doing is is just you know replacing or substitution only it's not more than that because you hear people saying i'm teaching online online what, what are you doing online i'm teaching online i'm putting pdf file i'm putting uh, uh, posting a video uh, uh, okay that's fine what is the interactivity what is the engagement and then from the second hand see well students are boring students are not paying attention students and because you know you the faculty member were not trained well okay about how to use those tools at which stage to use them, depending on what they're teaching, which tool to use, depending on what you are doing, okay? So all those things, uh, and the alignment is very important, Raniero, the alignment of the learning objective with the assessment and the activities, they have to be all aligned together. If they're not aligned, you know, uh, it would be uh, one piece here, one technology here, one activity here, and your course will be scattered all over the place, you know? Uh, so that's that's the story about online teaching and uh, uh, and learning. You welcome back, Denise. 
So we can, uh, I guess we can proceed. I don't know if Nazi is back. But anyway, Kifaya, you're with us, yes? Yes, I am. Okay, very good. Excellent. And Arwa is with us too. So I will uh, proceed if uh, yes. Nazi, Nazi will join maybe soon. Okay? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay, the first tool, the first tool, let me move this one from here. Now you see uh, my slide very well, right? So here we're going to be talking about, uh, hopefully, in, you know, in one hour or less, about uh, uh, the first tool I want you to, you know, to talk about is what we call H5P. H5P, it's a, a free open source and mobile friendly tool that allows you to quickly and easily create, share, and reuse interactive activities. And usually in H5P, uh, as a tool, I will see a demo now. There is a website uh, called h5p.org. Uh, and there is another website, it's called h5p.com. Okay, I want you to, whenever you want to, to see what's uh, on H5P, go to h5p.org. Uh, and the good thing about H5P is that it, it, it can be integrated with so many platforms, you know, you know, like this tool, can be integrated with Moodle, it can be integrated with Blackboard, you can integrate it on your, uh, uh, let's say if you have a website, you can integrate it uh, in your blog, whatever. So what is H5P? H5P, if we look to, if we click on H5P here, I'm gonna go to the h5p.org. This is a website of uh, H5P. And as you see on the website, you can create, share, and reuse interactive HTML5 content in your browser. And talking about H5P and the activities, they have different type of activities, and they have a lot of examples on their website. For example, if you want to use, uh, 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 you have a video, and you want to make this video interactive, you go to interactive video, uh, activity and if you click on this one here let's say it will show you an example okay about interactive video this is an example of an interactive video a video which use the h5p thing to be to make it for your student or for your training interactive if, let's take an example right here later on we'll see how it is integrated in uh, moodle and it's very, it's very nice to see I'm gonna click on ingredient list. Okay, the video started and this is all what you see now is you as an instructor or professor have added things to your video to make it more interactive. First of all here, those are the ingredients in this video. A student look at that and see continue. Wonderful choice question. Now here, student can answer a question, what kind of berry is this? Is it a blueberry or strawberry? I'm gonna say it's strawberry and you can check it here and then correct and then you continue whatever video. So this is an example of an activity that you can develop with uh, H5P. Uh, the thing is that I will go back to the video. Uh, a lot of activities are available free and open for you to use. Let's look at this video, like uh, for example here. If you like this video, what you can do, look at the bottom here, there is something called reuse. And this is what type of license is attached to this video. And embed, you can take the code, if you click on this one, you can take the HTML code and put it on your website or your platform or LMS or whatever. If we say right of use, let's click on this one. And this is something we covered in uh, our first presentation. This video is, it has a CC BY license. Remember the Creative Commons license, attribution 4.0. It means if I take this video and download this video, okay, and put it somewhere and change whatever inside this video, maybe uh, the ingredients are in English, I want to make them in, uh, and we will see how, don't worry. Uh, uh, I have no problem because I'm using a, a video which is an open license. And once you click on reuse, it will give you the option to uh, download, okay, uh, 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 this file as or this video as 
uh, as a now it's downloaded to my computer down here so i downloaded this video later on i can i'll show you how you can modify it anyway so the h5 uh, p.org uh, website has so many activities depending on what type of activity you do. for example they have a course presentation activity branching scenarios they have uh, uh, accordion activity chart activity collage column they have around 43 different type of activities uh, available with example and they will show you how to create an activity and it, they will show you how to uh, 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 modify an activity so all those activities are you can use them, you can download them, you can adopt, adapt, change whatever you want with those activities. I will go for example now, okay, this is H5P. I have, I'm teaching uh, uh, using uh, uh, Moodle. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna use the Unimed uh, uh, Moodle platform and I'm gonna go to this uh, uh, Moodle platform now. If you look for, this is my course that uh, training I gave to uh, our friend in Libya. Anyway, so uh, if you look here, I have uh, some activities in my uh, uh, Moodle, which are uh, H5P activities. And since we have Dennis and Nazir, you know, media and journalism, for example, I have designed an activity for uh, the people I was training using H5P. For example, it's called journalism terminology. This is all H5P. For example, here, journalism terminology, inverted pyramid was the definition, what a hashtag means, definition, defamation, what does it mean, so on and so forth. I have used also a different activity type, for example, uh, 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 using dialogue part activity. And the dialogue part, it depends, and this is what I was trying to tell you, depending on what you are teaching and what type of engagement you want. For example, this is something you want your student to remember uh, 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 technical terms. This is in Arabic, for example. If you turn, if the student turn it like that, it means desk editor. What does it mean in Arabic? If you turn it, they will say it is called al muharrar al maktabi Moving on to the second activity, Sahafa Musawwara, it is what? It is pictorial journalism. In Arabic, it is Sahafa Musawwara, so on and so forth. This is another type of activity. Uh, there are, as I said, under H5P, you can have, uh, let's take this, for example. Uh, th this is all in Moodle. This is a quiz, for example, that, you know, I'm going to start a quiz here. This is another type of activity for students. Four times four is what? 16. And it gives me okay, it is true, and it gives me a timer here. And this is what we call an engagement activity. And you tell me, you know, like uh, how I'm gonna design an activity like that. It is there, you can use H5P, it's free, it's open. Uh, you can uh, find activities all over, you know, under their website. Uh, a lot of people are designing activity and, you know, putting them free and open for people to use, so on and so forth. And this is, uh, you, you move on with this activity and you say, for example, 82, 81, it will give you the, the correct answer and so on and so forth. Anyway, so this is, for example, here. Let's see, let's take an example here. I want, I am in Moodle, I'm, I'm using Moodle. Uh, the administrator in my institution have integrated H5P and it's easy to integrate H5P with your Moodle platform. I'm going to turn editing on here. I am the professor. Look how easy it is. I will go to the, let's say, I will, I will, I will take, I will go to my module. It's teaching online. I want to add an H5P activity or other activities. I'm going to here say, okay, I'm going to, I'm gonna add a new activity. Let me turn it, turn it off. I'm gonna go to turn it on again. Okay. Can I interrupt you? I'm gonna add, now I'm gonna add uh, uh, an activity. If you click in Moodle, let's say add an activity or resource. In Moodle, there are so many activities built in in Moodle 
And as I show you before, we have, those are the activities that are available in Moodle. This is an assignment activity and each one you click on it, it will give you the description on the right side, what is this activity and what you can do with it. There is the chat, if you wanna create a chat, live chat within Moodle, you can do it from this uh, choice. This is a very quick, uh, we call it a poll. If you wanna ask questions while you are teaching online, uh, database, external tools, feedback, and look here what you have. H5P, the one, the, the tool I told you about, it is not a Moodle activity or it's not a Moodle tool, but it was integrated within Moodle. Yani it is integrated within Moodle. So if I click on this one, I say, I wanna create an activity, which is an H5P activity. Look how easy it is. I just, I am in Moodle now. I just click on the ad. I give it a description. This is, for example, a test activity. All right. And then here, it give me the editor of the H5P. I decide what type. I said we have around 40, maybe 40 or more than 40 different type of activity. You choose which activity, let's say arithmetic quiz, and then you give it a title here and then you start designing your activity while you are in Moodle and then you save it. And here you go that this activity now is available for you. What you can do also, either you create an activity uh, 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 yourself or you can upload an activity and uh, uh, modify it within Moodle. So this is what we call uh, a H5P activity. But as I said, in Moodle here, there are so many activities, lesson plan, quizzes, uh, surveys, uh, wikis, all those are different type of activities that you can uh, 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 use uh, while using Moodle. I'll, uh, with H5P, let me go back to the PowerPoint presentation. This is H5P. As I said, this is uh, the website of H5P. You find the activities example. Another application I want you to learn about and you need to download it on your desktop or on your mobile, it's called the Lumi uh, application. Lumi, L-U-M-E, if you click on it, and I'll tell you what's Lumi because it works with H5P. You know, this is Lumi, it is an editor, an offline editor for creating activity. For example, you want to create activities you don't have internet, you are, you are at home and you wanna do it offline and design your activities. What you can use, you can use Lumi uh, uh, editor to create the activities and later on you can upload them to Moodle, to Blackboard, to whatever you want. Lumi is an editor for H5P content. And this, if you look here, you have also the same activities that we have seen uh, uh, on the H5P website, or we have seen on the uh, 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 Moodle platform. For example, if you want to create a multiple choice uh, a quiz, okay, this is a multiple choice quiz. Let's let's take an example. I will, uh, and it's nice. You can download once once you download. You can download Lumi on Windows. You can load, download it on Mac OS or Linux. Let's take an example. I, I will take an example. I will go to Lumi. This is, I have it on my desktop. This is Lumi. I want to take, for example, uh, this is an activity. Okay, this is the editor. Now I'm working in Lumi editor. I'm in the view here. I'm going to start the quiz. This is a quiz which was designed as an activity. You, you see the quiz. Okay, and then it moves to the second one. And then I'm just answering like that. And then it moves to this one. Okay, it's giving me, and then it's, uh, it's recording the time. Now, this activity, you can edit it. You can change whatever you want to change with it. And if you go to edit, it will open the activity for you. It will give you uh, uh, all the details. You can uh, uh, change whatever you want to change in, inside the activity, okay? Uh, this is another activity. For example, this is 
uh, you are uh, uh, trying to create an activity to, uh, for example, to present your course, a presentation. It has different slides, slide three, slide four. You can uh, change, it has an editor. You can change here from uh, English to Turkish, from English to Italian, you can modify. And then once you are done, you save your activity and it is saved as an H5P file that you can use everywhere. Another, uh, this is for example, it is a different type of activity. So what I'm trying to say, uh, the H5P, it's a nice free and open uh, tool for you to use to design interactive activities and use the Lumi, use the Lumi uh, editor and offline editor to create activities and stuff like that. Hello, I'm going a little bit uh, uh, quick, yani we're not gonna, but at least now you know about it uh, uh, because we don't have much time because I have so many other applications I wanna talk about, but this is now you know what H5P is and what Lumi is. Another important uh, uh, tool and application, for example, I'm teaching uh, our training or for example, uh, Rainero with the, uh, 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 with, the, with this project, the race project. He's looking for a tool, uh, for example, uh, to be used by all participants to uh, capture, organize, share, collaborate, uh, different type of resources. The WAC, this is the Wakelet, this one here, it's a very nice application and it is a free and, a free and open application that you can use just you know sign up you can sign up with your uh, uh, google account with microsoft account okay and it is a very nice application this is my uh, gmail account i'm gonna sign in this is my portfolio under wakalit for example let's take an example be ready we're gonna do something together now let's try it uh, this is my portfolio here. I have a collection uh, about COVID. I have a collection about journalism. I have a collection about biology, open educational resources. Let's say we want to uh, create a new collection together. Uh, for example, now that I want you, uh, the participants now, I want you all to contribute to this collection. Uh, see how nice it is let's say I, I will create a new collection i can give it a name raised uh, uh, let's say training okay you can of course uh, uh, upload an image so it make it nice uh, this is a test for our training okay I have created this, uh, I'm, I am creating uh, something and let me, before I share something with you, uh, I will, what are the content, what are the content that you can add? You can add a URL to this portfolio, you can add text, you can add a YouTube video, you can add tweets, you can add bookmark images, you can upload a PDF file. You can use a file from Google Drive, from OneDrive. You can add videos from Flipgrid that we will talk about. So here, okay, let's say I want to add a, 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 a URL. For example, I want to add, I'm going to find uh, a raised, uh, let's say I'm working on the internet. I And uh, this is the raised project. This is the website, I guess. Right, I'm gonna take this link, I'm gonna copy it, and I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna back, go back to, I will close this one, I will close this one. I will come here to my uh, collection and I'm gonna paste, okay. Now I paste this URL into my collection, now it's there. What you can do, you can, if you wanna change it, change the picture, you can edit it. I can do whatever I want here, okay, for the forces to say, that's fine. Okay, so now I, I start creating, maybe I saw a, okay, maybe I saw a, a tweet uh, about race project and I want to add this tweet to my collection, you can do it here. Later on, you can uh, reorder 
reorder the collection, take this one down, up, whatever. It's a very nice, easy tool to use. But what I will do now, I want you to, what I will do is I want to share with you a link and we want to try it together, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna share, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna go to, okay, this is uh, the, the collection. I have one link here. I'm gonna invite, I click on invite. Either you can invite by a link or if you have the username of the people, you type the email of the people here and then you send them a, an invite. But I'm gonna use this link or if you have a, uh, you can copy the code, people can scan the code and can, for example, if you are uh, doing a training uh, uh, or if you are in a face-to-face, -face, you can uh, print it and put it and people can scan it with their mobile. I'm gonna copy this link now. I will go to, uh, to our, uh, let me minimize this, let me minimize this, um, and I will minimize all this, I will, participant, all right, if I find it, and I will type it here. All right. What I want you now, I want you to click on this uh, uh, link here. I, okay. And I want you to, we want to collaborate together on this uh, uh, wakalet that I have created for the race public. Okay, go ahead. Can you, can you click on it, please? I did. Okay. I will go back. Let me close all those here. I will close the clock here. All right. Uh, try to try to find a, a link or add a tweet or add a YouTube video or whatever to uh, I'm giving you some time so you can add something. Just press the plus button and add a tweet, add a link, add a, a link to YouTube video, whatever. The race collection. I have two items now. Anybody could uh, uh, add something to? Not yet. Not yet. It doesn't let me in. I just had to put my name in. It's asking to put some name. I did and now Um, hold on. So this is a test for our training. Shall I click on it? Yeah, yeah, fine, fine. Just add something. I will. Uh... So it means edit collection. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Kifaya, start writing something. Kifaya is here and she's trying. You see, I can see Kifaya now. Nazir is here. 
Great. See now what what you are doing. Okay. This is lovely. Nazi. Okay. Nazi, we are collaborating on a project together. Yeah. Okay. And you know, we are in the same group and we are interacting, we are collaborating. And it's very simple to use. All you have to do once you send the invitation and you invite your student. Uh, now, Vichaya added an item, great. Okay, I, you can see, everybody can see what's happening. Home, see the, ah, thank you, thank you. Now she have added the website of uh, SESI, right? Hello, okay, man. so here we are, uh, we are collaborating. So this is a tool which is free and open. And the good thing is you can download it on your mobile and you can, let's say you are, you are part of the group and we don't remember where we go, which website we see, which uh, Twitter uh, we have seen. Okay. And you wanna, especially in your project now, you can use this e-portfolio, okay, to, to collaborate. This is, for example, a tool for uh, a collaboration. Let's see what Nazih added now. Nazih? Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Nazih added for us a picture from our, uh, let's say, session today. Thank you, Nazih. Nice, huh? Beautiful. Beautiful. So, and then later on, the thing is, it has so many, uh, the, on the left side here, you can create as many collection as you want. You can start working on them. And once you are ready, you can make it, you can make it public. And the thing is about Wekelet is you can have followers later on, you know, which, you know, maybe worldwide are working on the same topic. You can invite them, you can follow them. You see, it's the same concept right here on the left side. Okay. And can you can create as many collection as you want. And for, uh, okay. And then you can collaborate. And when it comes to the collection, I will repeat, edit collection, you can add, those are the items that you can add. You can upload a PDF file. You can upload a picture. You can uh, upload a tweet, anything. And they will be on one single location. And this is an activity which is used for uh, collaboration. All right? You know, actually, what I thought was maybe as behalf of race, everyone can use this as a log. So any, any step everyone was taking could create a chronological order of things happening in multiple dimensions. That's what I felt. For example, Allah, the thing is, what can that, uh, this tool, what I'm trying to say, this is a tool. Now, you know, you as a professor or trainer, you understand that this is a tool available and free and open. Now you have to decide, okay, how you want to use this tool. It has all the features. Okay, then you can design a, 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 a whatever resources you want to create in a way that you involve your student or the people you are training or whatever. Let's say in the race project, maybe Raniero will 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 suggest this tool for all the people uh, working different ARU unit. They are collaborating. They see things. They want to share things together in one single place. Okay, or single topic, maybe they can use this wakalet for uh, this type. It depends, okay? And it's very simple to use. Just take some time, okay? And uh, uh, you can always make it uh, uh, your collection. You can make it private. You can make it uh, 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 public. You can make it whatever, you know. You can do whatever you want to do with your collection. Well, there is a yeah. question from Kefaya. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, because I I minimize the I minimize the. Let me just check here. Yes, what's uh, the question, yes, Kefaya? Uh, yes, Mr. Fauzi. If we want to use this uh, apps uh, through a training, uh, let's say I have a training with a student online, and okay. I'm going to use this uh, kind of uh, apps. So uh, in this case, uh, they have the right to change anything through the training. If I am uh, led them to uh, uh, make any videos, to insert videos or any text, so they, they will be able to add anything they want. And on the end of the training, so they have their own uh, 
uh, addition? Uh, yeah, I mean, whenever you create, the thing is very simple. And this is, you know, part of the, you know, engagement. For example, you are giving a training or whatever, and you want uh, your t trainees to collaborate uh, uh, together. You can create yeah. for, you can, you as, uh, you know, you can create a, 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 a place or space and with a topic and you define what you want them to do and you invite your people and then they have to, for example, start putting stuff there and see and uh, uh, see what will happen. It's a very engaging activity. People love yes. it, you know. So, so uh, yeah, of course, you can. Yes, okay, thank you very much. And you can change the feasibility, you can delete the collection, you, you can have some analytics about, you know, uh, uh, about this collection, if somebody copied it, somebody uh, took it, somebody, you know. Yeah. So, you, but in the end, in the end, it's a kind of an engagement from the student through the training. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it, it is there, it can stay there. And it's something, you know, that, you know, uh, it happens, with, uh, it can be for you. Uh, whenever you are finding, you are surfing the internet, finding stuff, uh, research paper, article, PDF file, video, and yeah. you, you get lost. Then what you can do is you can uh, in, in install it. If, if you're using Google Chrome, you can install it as uh, on, on, on your desktop here. And yeah. anything you find interesting, you click on the, here, I'll show you in the settings here. And if you go to extension, for example, what are extension with my Chrome? You see, I have Wakalet here. I can yeah. turn it on. Once I turn it on here, it is up here on my Google Chrome. So yeah. when, whenever I'm surfing and find something interesting for my student, for my whatever, I can I click can on Wakalet. It. it will add it automatically to whatever collection you decide. Yes, okay. yeah. can, I, can I ask another question? Yes, of course. In that, that sense, maybe let's say at the end of the semester or at the end of the project, you want to publish all those engagements, interactions as kind of a workbook. You can download as PDF later on. You can, huh? Yeah, of course, of course. Of course. That's lovely. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, uh, the thing is like, because we don't have too much time, you know, and there are so many, but I, I, that's why I selected a couple of applications, I think. But I'll be ready later on, you know, to do uh, maybe if you have a question, drop me an email or one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. If you have any question, I'll be, I'll be glad to answer your question, really. Okay. Another, uh, let's go back to, <clears throat> to our uh, tool. This is Wakala. Hypothesis. You've heard about hypothesis before, uh, tool. This is hypothesis. It is a very beautiful tool that you can use, especially, you know, uh, for annotation. It is annotating anything on the internet, annotating a PDF file. For example, you know, like hypothesis is beautiful and you can download it and add it as an extension with your Chrome, let me show you how it works. Okay. You uh, just to create an account, it's free of charge. I don't know if uh, I think I have it here. I wanna, no, I don't wanna, let me close this one. But I think I have it, yes, I have it here. Okay. So the, the hypothesis here, here we go. Let me close this one. All right. Extension. Okay. All right. I have it here at at uh, at the. Uh, at the top of my Chrome, you can, it is, I click on it, hypothesis, and you can install it. Just create the uh, username and password, you know, and then if you look right here, I'll show you how the hypothesis work. You can, for example, I want to annotate, 
you can create a, something annotated and on the public, anybody can see it on the internet, or you can create a group. For example, I create a group like a, a, a race project, and then I start annotating. So anything, you know, like if you go and try to find or upload, let me just minimize all those. All right, let's say uh, I want to hear talk about uh, uh, refugees in Lebanon. Let's say I have a file, okay. This is, uh, this is a website, for example, I'm looking at the uh, refugees in Lebanon and I want to remove this from here. Bring it down. Okay. I click on the hypothesis here. And I'm going to start annotating. Okay. I can. I take this one. I'm on the internet now. Huh? I can make this one. I want to highlight, okay. I want to take this one. I want to add something about this. Hello, this is a test. Okay, I'm writing in Arabic. Let me change to English. Hello, it's a test. So what I'm doing here, post, where I want to post to race project. Now the whole, the whole group, which is on the race project, can see on this page my annotation. For example, I, I'm reading a, a page on the internet. You are doing, uh, giving your student a, a case study or the, you want them to annotate and put their comment. And anytime you go to hypothesis here, anytime you go to hypothesis and you just go to your annotation, you click on it, it will take you to the annotation by whom it was annotation uh, annotated. You can delete, you can change, you can write, you can do anything. The annotation, it, it works on any web, on any page on the internet. It can be a public annotation or it can be a private annotation for a group of people you work on it. It's used by millions of people nowadays. And this is another tool for collaboration, for example, in your class, in your training. Uh, uh, and of course, as I said, you can annotate the, a PDF file or whatever, okay? So this is another tool. I think uh, we still have 10 minutes because I think I have a video conference with UNESCO Paris at, uh, in 10 minutes. All right, let's move on. Uh, Unpaywall, Unpaywall, this is another uh, application and tool that you can install and it uh, with your browser and what is the unpaved uh, wall is sometimes you know you try to find a, a or you search for an article and this article you cannot it's behind the uh, paywall of universities or uh, uh, firewall or you have to pay uh, whatever so if you install unpaid wall it's a small icon uh, on your desktop or under your Chrome uh, uh, browser, what it does is whenever you find an article, it will give you uh, uh, a sign on the right. I'll show you how. And then if you click on this sign, then say, well, it try to look in the databases that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the collection they have. And it will, uh, if, if, if this article is available in open databases, it will bring the article for you so that you can download it. Okay, so it's called the unpay wall. It's another tool which is very important. Uh, there is a tool which is, you know, let's say, you know, now we want to use together a, 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 a whiteboard, something, you know, for free to uh, brainstorm in this session. We can use, for example, the uh, Jamboard right here let me show you quickly 
Let's go in here. Maybe the link is broken. I don't know. Let me go to Google Jamboard. Here we go. Maybe the link is broken, but that's fine. Uh, what happened? Google Jamboard. Go. Let's see. You have it, but why I cannot? Ah, an error, please try reloading re this page. There is a problem with the, with the Jamboard on Google, not from here. Let's try to reload it again. Hmm. Anyway, uh, the Jamboard, it's a, it's a whiteboard free of charge from Google. That is, they have a problem on the Google Jamboard. What you can do is uh, you can uh, create a, a whiteboard. You can invite the same thing as I did with Wakalet. You can send the link, copy the link and send it and everybody can write on the uh, 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 this Jamboard that you create. Another uh, tool, I, I, we don't have time to, to, to uh, explain all the tools and how they work. But another tool is the, the Mentimeter. Also, it's a free to use interactive presentation that allow real time interaction between presenter and their audience. Hala, Mentimeter, uh, it is for free. Part of it is free. If you want more advanced feature, then you have to pay for it. Flipgrid, this is a very nice tool. It's offered by, it's free of charge. And this is, if you wanna uh, connect your student or your trainers, you know, by letting them creating a video instead of typing text, you know, create a video and uh, uh, those videos will be posted as, you know, uh, they call it flip grid. It will be posted on a platform and then student can answer student or they can create another video to answer their video. They can comment and on their video. It's a very nice uh, tool available. Another tool is called Screencastify. This is also a free if you want to record your screen. Uh, uh, edit, share videos, uh, capture your computer screen is called Screencastify. Uh, also another application is called Anchor. It's also a free in all in one platform. Also it is another application for you to record, edit audio, uh, arrange podcast. For example, you say I want I want a tool to, I want to uh, uh, record the podcast, you know, audio files, and I want to arrange them in audio one, two, three, four, and I want to send it or put it somewhere on my blog or on my website so that the student will listen to my uh, episode, uh, episode one, two, three, four. You can use the Anchor. Anchor is a very nice uh, uh, tool and it's free of charge. You have the Loom also. This is so Anchor, it's for audio files. Uh, the Loom, it's also, it's like screen, uh, Screencastify for creating a voice, uh, uh, for recording your screen with voice uh, and video. Uh, I, I have included here uh, a link to it's, uh, a place, a very nice, if you want different type of productivity tool, especially in, on the, in this website, all the tools available, it's called uh, uh, no registration web two tools. Yani. They classify them as, for example, tools for polls. Yani. You don't have to, students don't have to download them, okay, and create username and password. They can be used and they are very well classified and sorted and curated. <clears throat> All different type multimedia tools, uh, uh, audio tools, movie making tools, uh, voice tools. You have a good number of what they call. Uh, no registration web to tools, you know, just take a look at uh, this website. It's a very nice uh, website. Uh, you have also here the EdTech Hub, okay? Also, it is uh, a website which was created by uh, uh, UNESCO, okay, with the EdTech people. It has a very uh, great amount of uh, uh, tools available for you to find free and non-free application. If you go to the database, this one at Tech Hub, okay, 
It is supported by UK Aid and the World Bank and UNESCO. And it includes a lot of educational tools for you to look at. And you can filter them on the left side, higher education, primary education, and give you the, the, the application. And it tell you if it's free or not free, what language available. And you can, of course, find so many uh, 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 application on, on this uh, uh, website. Uh, let me move on. Uh, add puzzle also, it is another tool which is, uh, I think it's interesting to look at. The World World, also another app. If you want to create activities, interactive activities, quizzes, small uh, games, you know. All right. So th this is a variety of tools and application that I think it's, uh, 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 I find it very interesting for you uh, to look at. So this is, I will stop here to take if you have any question and uh, I will wait for uh, you to see if you have any question, you know, I'll be uh, glad to uh, answer you.